Everything is a plan for me picking my woman. Tina's an athletic woman. I'm an athletic man. It's all lined up. Our last name is Ball. College man, Before LeVar Ball's dream of having all three of his sons play for the Lakers at the same time took a slight left turn. They let go of the best thing they had going for him. No. I told him, if you get the ball, boys, you can survive this. Now you can't. Before LeVar would get into beef with the President of the United States. Tell Donald Trump to have a great Thanksgiving, because Big Baller is. I hope you're thankful for him. Take care. I'm thankful for everybody doing Thanksgiving. It's November. <laughs> Before LeVar and his sons would find out that one of the family's closest friends was stealing from Big Baller brand. Because like when we looked at the transactions, this shit didn't start happening until my mom got sick, because she took care of all the money shit. So that's what really hurt me. I'm like, I'm like, that shit hurt me. Like. And before the man would give us some of the most entertaining moments in media history, including. Before, it's only two dudes better than me, and I'm both of them. What? And of course. You know, I'm undefeated one on one. I don't never lose one on one. Did you ever play Michael Jordan? If he played me, he'd cry. The Varball finessed the sports world from the sidelines in ways that not many others have ever done before him. I mean, there aren't that many dads that get regular slots on ESPN, although after his most recent comments, we're not sure if he'll be back on there anytime soon. LeVar, can I switch gears with you? for? Because I have a question you here. You can switch gears with me anytime. Okay. <laughs> Let's stay oh focused Lord. here. <laughs> All right. Um, Say what you want about LeVar Ball, but there is no doubt that he is one of the most supportive parents that we have in the public eye, and he really just wants the best for his kids. His methods are a bit over the top, but I think it all comes from a place of love, and who are we to say that it hasn't worked so far? What's going on, good people, in the comment section? I hope you're having one heck of a day. My name is Jeremy Heck, and I'll be your host today as I take you through the life and finesse of LeVar Ball, here for you on Before They Were Famous. If you're new here, I'm the LA host for this channel, and although I am sad to see LeVar leave LA, if his plan somehow ends up working out, maybe he'll return alongside LaMelo in the future. Some people say that me, Jared, and Michael are like the Ball family of media. Well, people really just say that we look alike. It could be the beards or the whiteness. But I will say this, Michael is the LeVar of this media empire and Jared and I are stepping in as the Lonzo and Mello to fulfill his dreams of having his kids one day play in the league. So hopefully, I'm making you proud, Dad. And no shade to Jello, but nobody really wanted to be Jello in this situation, so. We've covered everyone else in the Ball family for this channel, so be sure to check those videos out after you finish watching this one and follow me on Instagram to let me know who to cover next or in the comments down below and I will talk to you guys there. Before we start though, I've got a trivia question for you. What would LeVar have named his fourth son if he had had one? Stick around until the end of the video to find out the answer. All right, let's get into the show. Before they were famous. Before they were famous. Before they were famous about. <gasps> that was a pretty good video. I like this guy. Look, Freddie, cool. you did a great job. Michael job. is never wrong. So damn, that was cool. How did he know that? Bro! LeVar Ball was born on October 23rd, 1968 in South Los Angeles, California. He grew up with four brothers whose names all begin with the letter L, LaFrance, Lavelle, Lorenzo, and LaShawn, a tradition that he later carried on with him when naming his future children. The L thing is kind of ironic because no matter what you have to say about the guy, he's taken a lot of W's in his life. He got the Lakers hat. I'm trying to tell you, I knew this was happening before it was happening. When did you get this hat made? Uh, when he was a baby. LeVar and his brothers loved playing basketball and always pushed each other to become better on the court. And the family competition worked out because LeVar was a three-sport letterman at Canoga Park High School in the Valley. He was an all-league in basketball and did well on the football field and running track, but his best shot at playing pro seemed to lie on the ball court. So he decided to focus all of his efforts into making the NBA, heading to college at Washington State to play basketball. And while he often brags about being one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the world and being better than Michael Jordan, he clearly wasn't the best five-on-five -five player, only averaging 2.2 points and 2.3 rebounds per game in his 1987 season. I ain't gonna get on that. I'm not gonna be like everybody else and talk about, oh, what you did or didn't do when you went college. Forget all of that. Right. What I'm asking you is a simple question. We, we talk about the GOAT here, the greatest of all time, Michael Jordan, and you running your mouth talking about you're going to beat him one-on-one. -on -one. Why would you say something so blasphemous? In my heyday, blasphemous. he would need help. Really? He too really? small. And since the numbers didn't speak for themselves, LeVar wanted to prove that he could hold his own with the best. He wasn't satisfied with his minutes on the court, so after one season, LeVar transferred to Cal State University in Los Angeles. 
His mouth may have you believe otherwise, but LeVar is extremely calculated and knew that not making the NBA was a likely possibility at this time, so he focused his energy on studying criminal justice with a plan B of becoming a U.S. Marshal. If you 80% in plan A and you 20% in plan B, you ain't 100 in. Mm -hmm. So don't be mad when you don't make it because you worry about a fallback plan. Transferring schools proved to be the greatest move of his life, not because his playing time improved, but because it was at Cal State that he met his future wife and mother of his children, Tina. She was also a basketball player on the women's team at Cal State, and naturally, LeVar was sold. He was not only attracted to who she was as a person, but also her height. Is, is Tina here? I get my things. Seeing the potential for greatness, within their children. When we met, he told me that we were gonna get married and have boys, because he only makes boys, of course. Tina unfortunately suffered a stroke at the age of 49, and as of right now, I don't know exactly what condition she's currently in, so I just wanted to send my condolences and best wishes to the family if they are watching this. It seems like she's a fighter, and knowing that family, they'll get through anything thrown their way. All right, back to the story. And even though he was all conference at Cal State, averaging 15.8 points and 8.9 rebounds per game, LeVar realized that despite his extreme confidence in his own abilities, his dream of being the next MJ weren't going to come true. So he transferred once again, this time to Long Beach City College, so that he could play one year of football as a tight end. And that dream seemed like it could actually pan out. In 1994, LeVar was signed as a free agent defensive end to the New York Jets under coach Pete Carroll. LeVar wore number 99 and played hard in training camp, but was cut before the season began. The following season under new coaching staff, he returned to the Jets, this time as his original position of tight end. Former linebacker Marvin Jones recalls practicing with LeVar Ball and said, He was a very athletic guy and raw. I remember a very confident guy. And yes, he voiced his opinion and was cocky, but overall seemed like a great guy. After getting cut again, he played football sporadically for the London Monarchs in the WLAF and made it onto the practice squads for the Jets and the Carolina Panthers. But nothing stuck and he was unable to make it onto the official roster for an NFL team. So LeVar's new plan was to become a personal trainer. Tina became a physical education teacher and her and LeVar got married in 97. Their first son, Lonzo, was born that same year and with him, the start of a new basketball dream. Truth is, I'm the best. He's second and he's last. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm the best. LiAngelo was born a year later and LaMelo was born in 2001. So with three sons, the potential for a family of superstars started to shine through for LeVar. And if you think that the big baller brand plan wasn't set in motion from day one, then you might be overlooking just how calculated LeVar is. Even his youngest son, LaMelo, started first grade a year early so that he could possibly play high school basketball with his two older brothers while they were still in school. All three of my boys are gonna end up on the same team at some time. And when it does, it's a wrap. LaMelo began practicing with his older brothers on the court when he was just four years old. Melo also played flag football with his brothers when he was five. Two hand cut behind the head. Six. Yes, hard. There you go. Let me see some handling, man. Their father, LeVar, he had a plane. Get it, he can't throw it up in his face now. LeVar created his own U17 team so that he could coach his boys directly, and they were a pretty dominant squad. But LeVar didn't believe in trophies, whether they were for participation or championships. And I love that tactic. It makes people fall in love with the process of winning rather than the material reward that comes after you win. The Ball brothers all attended Chino Hills High School where they started to make a name for themselves as one of the hottest basketball families in the nation. By the time LaMelo was in high school, gyms all across Los Angeles were packed out as people waited to see the Ball prodigy who was shooting half court shots and dunking effortlessly in games. The team became the number one squad in America at one point. The family appeared together in the extremely successful Facebook show Ball in the Family with multiple millions of views per episode. Some people even labeled the Ball family the Kardashians of basketball, although I would argue that the Kardashians have had some exceptional basketball talent at their family dinners as well. I mean, they could have a decent starting five with Tristan Thompson, Ben Simmons, Lamar Odom, Blake Griffin, and Jordan Clarkson. Sorry, Chris Humphreys, you're gonna come off the bench for this one. Look, it's it's really not that Chris, big of a sweetie, deal. Chris, sweetie, entire basketball arenas of God-fearing Americans just want to reach out and just punch you in that beautiful little face. Lonzo was the first to earn a scholarship to UCLA, followed by LiAngelo and later LaMelo, although he chose to forego college altogether. And since this is the updated version, we'll take you through what happened to each of the brothers since the last time we made a video on LeVar. First up, we have the first piece of the puzzle, Lonzo. 
I'm Lonzo Ball and I'm from Chino Hills, California. Anybody that you want to give special thanks to that helped mold you and the person and player you are right now? Uh, definitely my dad. Even when I was little, he brought me up to, to uh, play basketball. And ever since I started playing, he's been right there for me. Lonzo had a successful career at UCLA, being labeled as one of the most promising prospects in college basketball that year. And LeVar's dream of having his boys play for the Lakers began to come true as Lonzo was drafted with the second overall pick in the 2017 NBA draft. The Los Angeles Lakers select Lonzo Ball from UCLA. And while everyone thought bringing Magic, LeBron, and having Lonzo in LA would bring back the Showtime Lakers, in his first two seasons he didn't meet the high expectations placed on him. He was recently traded to the Pelicans for Anthony Davis, where he looks to create a legacy of his own with a new team, and I have a feeling the best is yet to come for Lonzo. It'll be the worst move the Lakers ever did in their life, and they'll never win another championship. Guaranteed. Next up we have Jello, the second child, Angelo also played for UCLA. Well. He technically only played one game before the shoplifting scandal of 2017 took place in China. We all went out one night, uh, went through the malls, went through, went to the Louis Vuitton store, and uh, he's, people started taking stuff. And then, you know, me just not thinking and being with him, I took something too. Ball and two teammates were arrested in a Louis Vuitton store in China for shoplifting, which ended up gaining nationwide press coverage and even action from President Trump himself. This is what started a hilarious back and forth between Trump and LeVar. Do you think Trump is a racist? Do I think he's racist? Yes, yes he's racist. Everybody sure. know that. But because of the incident, he was forced to leave UCLA. He continued his basketball career in Europe, signing with a team in Lithuania, and after putting up multiple games with 20 plus points, he entered his name into the 2018 NBA draft. But unfortunately, LeVar's dream continued to face problems as Jello went undrafted. In 2018, he played in his father's junior basketball association, a league created as an alternative to college basketball. And it was there that Jello averaged an insane 52 points per game in his four games. And while it still remains to be seen whether or not he'll get his NBA shot, LeVar is still hopeful. The good thing about him not being drafted or nothing, he can go anywhere. He ain't got no restrictions. Alonzo might be like, you know what, New Orleans, bring my brother over here, okay. And last but not least, we have Melo. We recently did his before they were famous, so check that out for his whole story. But let's just say the kid is an absolute star. From his flash on the court, to his personality, to his ability to win basketball games, I have a feeling he might become the most successful ball in the family. Most recently, he announced that he will forego playing college to play in Australia in the hopes of becoming the number one pick in the 2020 draft the following year. Everybody's goal to be number one pick, playing the NBA, so that's that. In terms of the big baller brand, well, it's faced some troubles recently. After the family found out that Alan Foster, one of LeVar's closest friends and business partners, was allegedly stealing upwards of $1.5 million from the company. And while it's still up in the air whether the boys will sign with Nike, or maybe they already have, LeVar says that things will be business as usual for the family. Big baller brand is a family brand. Mm -hmm. Family ain't going nowhere. If only LeVar would have had a fourth kid, then he could have gone with his boys to open gyms and they could have challenged people to games of five on five. What'd you name your fourth kid? My fourth kid? Yeah. Well, if I had one, you know what his name would be? What would his name be? The Greatness. Oh, gosh. And there you have the answer to your question from the beginning of the video. Um, the Greatness. What else would you expect from LeVar? So what's next for LeVar and the boys? Well, we'll have to wait and see because this is before they were famous. That's all I've got for you in this video though. Let me know who we should cover next in the comments down below or follow me on Instagram and let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Dream good, live better, have one heck of a day. Subscribe to this channel, please. We are so close to 3 million subscribers. We need your help. Help us get there. Hit the notification bell so you uh, so that you don't miss. Hit the no hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. I always have run on outros, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of here before I keep talking. All right, see ya.